Power Wash Simulator is by far one of my all-time favorite games. I find it to be very relaxing, as do most people. In case you're unaware, Power Wash Simulator is a first-person shooter game where you play as the owner of a young power washing business. It gained a lot of popularity when Markiplier first played it back in July of 2021. During one of his videos showcasing the game, he called upon MadPad, the infamous game theorist, to do a game theory episode on Power Wash Simulator. Unfortunately, I found MadPad's video to be almost disappointing. While Matt put a lot of time and effort into his theory, it always sort of bothered me how surface level it was, seeing the amount of FNAF content he has. Granted, at the time of Matt's video, the game didn't have a whole lot to work with, as it has a pre-release title and still gets a ton of new content updates every few months. But now that the game has celebrated its one year anniversary, there are many more levels to complete, and with those levels, more lore begins to show its face. In this video, I'll be attempting to put together the story of Power Wash Simulator, and perhaps theorize about what may be to come. Our story begins with a young person deciding to start their own power washing business. We start with our own van as sort of a tutorial level. During our cleanse, several people message us to ask for our services, although during our jobs, we get messages pertaining to those jobs we're doing and the world we're in. Most of the time, these messages are just world building storylines, but sometimes we can hear about important things going on around town. The first client we'll meet is named Harper Shaw. She's almost like our publicist, as almost everyone gets our information from her. Did I mention the town we live in is called Muckingham? It, there's actually a map on the subway that shows the surrounding towns, and boy, these names are great. Harper will refer us to Calvin Miller, a volcanologist, who I think that's how you say that, who will be very important to the main story down the line. We're not going to go through every citizen we ever come into contact with, though some of them could be heavily, lightly, and some not at all. The other important character we encounter is the mayor of Caldera City, Jeff Jefferson the 13th. There's 13 of them. 13? Like I said, there's a lot of filler missions, especially in the earlier parts of the game. However, I enjoy this as it sort of introduces us to the residents of Muckingham and Caldera City. We can put the story of the town together from the messages we get from Harper, Calvin, and the mayor. The first of the story we hear about is actually from the park warden, who informs us about the mayor's cat, Ulysses, going missing. A few jobs later, we hear about it again when we clean one of the fire chief's fire trucks. Denver Drill, the chief, mentions that there's a theory circulating that Ulysses isn't actually missing. It's just a distraction to the pipeline that the mayor is supposed to be building. Later in the job, we start to get texts from Calvin. He's in a helicopter around Mount Rushless, the volcano in Buckingham. Calvin tells us that he sees Ulysses in the outer rim of the volcano. He attempts to rescue the cat, but he never told us if he got a hold of him or not. A few jobs later, we get our first assignment from the mayor himself to clean off his golf cart. While this usually wouldn't be suspicious, the one message we get is when we finish. It reads, Looking at the golf cart now, it's almost like the whole thing never happened. You're a genius, dirt finder. Much obliged. What whole thing are you talking about, Mr. Mayor? This doesn't have anything to do with your alleged pipeline, does it? We go, soon go back to the fire station to hose off the helicopter Calvin was using for his volcanic research. He tells us that he got way too close to try to save Ulysses and almost died due to CO2 inhalation. Based on his messages, it looks like the chief told Calvin that he didn't actually see Ulysses, he was just hallucinating. Calvin denies it, but is happy to be safe nonetheless. Almost immediately after, we get called in the mayor's mansion to clean up. We see that the place has been egg. The mayor tells us that there's over 100 of them, launched over a period of 15 minutes. It sounds to me like something the mayor has done recently upset a substantial group of people. He also tells us that Ulysses is still missing, and several times people have reported missing cats as well. Speaking of the mayor's shady business deals, we meet a name by the name of Blake Thrust. Remember that for later. Based on the job we're doing, it seems like he's working with the mayor. We're to clean his drill, which to me can easily be linked to the mayor's pipeline project. Directly after cleaning Blake's drill, we get a call from Annie Mall, who runs a farm in Muckingham. On her property, she has a temple that some monks live in. She says that the mayor's pipeline is diverting all the water from the river to a secret mining wreck. Because the mayor has stolen the water, the monks can't grow their crops. So the head monk has sent them on a pilgrimage of faith where they took a vast multitude of eggs with them. A bit later in the game, we do another job for our fearless leader. We're cleaning his bow, and we soon find out why. He's planning to leave town using the river. He tells us, By the way, Dirt Finder, you may find a few people asking questions over the coming days, months, and years. Just tell them you don't know where I went, only that I left by car. Hopefully there's still enough water left in the river to ride this out of town. He also lets us know that if we ever find Ulysses, he's all ours. Harper also chimes in during this job. She has so much to say, so I'll just read everything. Hey, it's Harper. What on earth is going on in Muckingham? Just read a piece in Real News Now. The town with no cats. Is there really not a single cat left? I also read in the Daily Opinion that the mayor's water pipeline is just the tip of the iceberg. That's what he's doing with all that water, that's the dodgy bit. Rumor has it, 
He's funneling all that water to some billionaire guy running an illicit mining rig. Can't be true, can it? And is it related to the missing gas? The worst thing is that it'll only start something once I finally split town. Although, hey, you mustn't grumble. The desert dig I'm working on is amazing, and you should come visit. But back to the cats thing. Our next client, Sarah, will tell us more about the cat situation in town. She lets us know that some of the popular theories surrounding the missing pets. Some people think the cats are being sacrificed to appease the volcano. She says the vegans think they're a secret ingredient of a local burger restaurant. Another theory is that the cats are aliens. Okay. Sarah tells us her own theory that the cats will go wherever they can get the best dinner and that someone is out there feeding them well and that they'll be home soon enough. After we help Sarah, we head over to a subway station. The commissioner gives us some fun facts about the tracks during our work. Apparently, Mayor Jeff Jefferson X worked with Wilberforce Thrust to construct the station. However, when he revealed the station, he then passed away the same day due to bad construction. His son, JJ the 11th, reopened the station back in the 20s. The trains didn't run for long, as it was discovered that Wilberforce had been smuggling stolen money in the train cars. How fascinating that JJ 13 and Blake Thrust are working together. Later, when we help out a fortune teller at a local fair, she reads us our fortune, which is pretty vague as most are, but then Calvin starts messaging us towards the end of the job. He says that he's back on Mount Rushless trying to collect some data. He says, Never thought I'd say this in my lifetime, but the data is off the charts. I hope I'm wrong, but she looks ready to blow, and if she does, Muckingham is in real danger. We soon go visit Harper out in the desert during her dig. She and her team have uncovered a huge statue. Harper mentions that the statue is looking directly at Rushless and goes to some theories about the statue itself. However, Calvin texts us very worriedly. Doc, I don't know where you're at, but if it's anywhere near Muckingham, then you need to get out right now. Mount Rushless could blow at any minute. I'm just praying that I've got time to scoop up Ma and Pa first. After we finish the job, we learn something odd from Harper. We're taken aback by the statue itself, let alone that beam of light that was fired at the volcano. During our next job, we get a series of messages from our buddy Calvin once again. He says, Okay, so that was weird. Just as I was getting the heck off Rushless, there was this high flash of light, and I thought I was gone for sure. But no, the volcano just instantly calmed. She's starting to gurgle again now, but whatever it was should hopefully buy us some time to get everyone out of Muckingham at least. Afterwards, we get some messages from Tim Timmerman the first, who is ex Big Chady. We find out through his messages that he's actually the mayor, as he accidentally signs his message with JJ13. He tells us about his new shady business, where he meets with several rich investors, including a particular secret billionaire, who we can safely assume is none other than Blake Thrust. That is pretty much the extent of the story right now, but the game is currently on build 0.9, so there's definitely more content lore to come in the future. Where do I think the story's gonna go? Well, I think the mayor shape business deal is affecting Rushless's behavior. While I don't exactly have an explanation to the statue size in the mountain, there's definitely some supernatural entity here. As for the cats, I think they're actually out in the woods by the treehouse. The treehouse is inhabited by a man who is absolutely set on proving the existence of Bigfoot. Allow me to read his messages. Missing link fact. They're sometimes called Bigfoot because of their one big foot, kind of like a bear's. The other one is small, like a cat. I found track events of this myself. Missing link fact. They deposit their scat in bundles, much like a wild hawk, which they apparently share a very similar diet. Missing link fact. Their scent is very much like that of a muskrat, and they seem to crouch down when marking their territory to appear much smaller than they really are. This is pretty clear evidence to me that the town's cats are just feeding off the traps as guys since to try to find Bigfoot. And that about does it. I have some theories about parallels between Power Walk Simulator and another game, but this video is long enough already. The script is 6 pages and nearly 2,000 words. Thank you so much for watching, and look out for more content from me in the future.